vermouth. Is it more than just a mix for Martini in Manhattan? I'm going to taste through some high-quality vermouth, and I'm going to need your help on this one. That's all coming up. Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. And today, we're gonna taste something a little bit different. Fortified, aromatized wine known as vermouth. I'm going into uncharted territory with this episode because when it comes to alcoholic beverages, I usually stick to wine, not these specialty types of wines. Spirits, whiskey, that stuff, even if it's high quality, can give me a little bit of a headache. I do enjoy the flavors of high quality craft beers, but you know, more than one beer and I start to feel a little bit bloated and uncomfortable. So I kind of stick to wine, but I'm, I was interested to explore this. The history of these aromatized wines go back thousands of years. The Romans and then the Greeks before them were always making wines that they infused with the different Mediterranean herbs to give them unique flavors. Back then, the wine quality probably wasn't always the greatest. A lot of people associate vermouth was just a cheap vermouth that you mix in a Manhattan or a martini or some kind of cocktail or you just served it on the rocks but these are higher quality vermouths that are meant to be drunk on their own there are high quality vermouths out there like the ones we have here supposedly from Padre Co maybe I will hate them again uh, I'm not the hugest fan of aromatized wines but uh, you know what I'm gonna give these a go vermouths are unique because they have a bitter component like those bitters that you have those digestives that you have in Italy they have the fortification the higher alcohol so think port and then they have all the herbs the citrus peel so kind of think of it like if you mix a mulled wine a bitter and a port all together I guess theoretically that's what you got so we're gonna see here but the reason I was interested in uh, Padre & Co they have a long history I think the company's existed since the 1880s and not only that they also have their own vineyards, so they produce their own base wine, they grow their own citrus fruits, use some of the different herbs that are on the property, and try to do that all in-house. Well, you get a lot of big companies that buy a lot of base wine from all over the place, so they're kind of uh, vermouth manufacturers. This is actually a true, you know, vermouth producer slash grower, so that's why I wanted to taste them. I don't have a lot of experience with vermouth in general, so you're probably going to have a ton more experience than me, so if you have any opinions, suggestions, producers, drop it in the comments below. And while you're there, why don't you subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you know when new videos come out. What I do know, it's very simple. You take the base wine, you know, you infuse it with different herbs, you fortify the wine. Sometimes you add some Mistela, which is a sweet wine uh, in Spain here. These, these are of Spanish origin. And then you add some citrus peel, all that kind of stuff. And you can age it either in stainless steel or some kind of casks. I'm going to taste a few that have been aged actually in cask, chestnut and oak. So I'm excited to see if that adds anything to it. You are going to have five different levels of sweetness. You know, everything from extra dry to dry to semi-dry, semi-sweet, then sweet. I had to count, make sure that I was all five. What you do have to know is the sweet have to be at least 150 grams a liter of residual sugar, while the extra dry cannot be any more than 30 grams a liter of residual sugar. So even though it's extra dry and the dry, they're still going to be kind of sweet to those that are used to dry wines. Vermouths are made in Italy, France, Spain. I think there's some made in Portugal as well. And I know that some people are trying to do some in the new world too. Like I said, I'm not an expert on vermouth. I'm just gonna taste the wine, give my opinion. Let's get into it, shall we? First up, we have the Padre & Co. Rojo Classico Vermouth. This is aged in wood. I asked my friend who sent me these, how do I drink high quality vermouths? There are vermouth glasses. You know, there are high walled glasses, kind of cocktail glasses. Uh, he said that a white wine glass is fine. That's all I have. I have a Bordeaux type glass, so we're just going to have to taste with it. <laughs> high quality vermouths, you just serve chilled. You enjoy them on their own. So let's get into it, shall we? Time to open this. Allegedly, the vermouths, uh, they are fortified wines, but they do oxidize, so you can keep them in the fridge for a month, sometimes up to two months. Oh, it has a little bit of a pour here. Rojo Classico, which just means red, classic red, basically. More of like a molasses color. Really looks like an aged tawny port type of deal. I can already smell some of the herbs coming through. Let's Wormwood is the most was one of the most common herbs that are used in vermouth. That that's one thing I do know. So weird. I'm not used to <laughs> I'm not used to tasting these aromatized ones, but I actually think this taste this smells pretty pretty decent. So I'm gonna get mint, peppermint, a lot of botanicals, a lot of fall, potpourri type act. Really smells like potpourri, uh, air freshener, you know, so to speak. Molasses has kind of like this cherry cola, you know, type of flavor. Quite complex actually. The peppermint and the spearmint are really what come out on this. I was expecting to be really, really turned off by some of the, you know, some of these flavors. It smells pretty darn decent. Let's give it a go. 
I am not BSing with the... I was expecting... When I think of old vermouths, I've tried in the past, you know, cheap ones. I used to do a little bit of bartending, and I wasn't very good. That's why I only did it for a little while. But I remember the cheap vermouths I mixed in. They just smelled terrible to me. They tasted too much of uh, those infused herbs. This really does taste like wine, which I, I, I was really quite shocked. There is definitely sweetness here. Wow. I can see people that, if you're liking some of those aged stickies, I'm trying to think, some of some of the Vendue Naturels in the south of France, maybe some old tawny port, that type of flavor. Of course, you're going to get more herbs and that kind of stuff, but this is a kind of flavor profile. I mean, I would be fine having this daily. I, I, this is pretty good. 18% alcohol. Not really feeling it. Rojo Classico. Well, I'm actually pretty shocked. Good job. Let's move on, shall we? Next, we have the Dorado Amarco Suave Vermouth, Padro y Co. Padro and Co. Screw top once again. This is also aged in a type of wood, and all, it's made from Macabeo, if I remember right. These are these last two are the more kind of higher quality vermouths, so I'm excited. There's definitely a different type of flavor, a different type of flavor, a different type of color here. The Dorado Amarco almost looks like an orange wine or an aged white in color here. 18% alcohol. These last two are supposed to be a little drier, so let's see if they're pretty good. Wow. It doesn't smell like an aromatized wine. It could smell actually maybe kind of like an orange wine. There are some citrus peel type notes in there. Uh, you do get some of the Mediterranean, or kind of like the, those Mediterranean brush, Mediterranean grash. Maybe kind of rosemary type flavors. Maybe a little bit of sweet peach, a little bit of butterscotch. Pumpkin spice. Orange peel starts to come out. Really complex stuff. Now this one, the Rojo Clasco, I liked it because it was more whiny on the palate, where it was more aromatized on the nose. The Dorado Amarco smells more like wine on the nose, but the palate, it's quite uh, botanical, so to speak. You get all those herbs and stuff. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy about it. I think I like the Rojo Clasico a little bit more. You definitely get those bitter sensations. I don't know if you're ever in Italy, you have those bitters, those digestives afterwards, that kind of flavor, that's what you're going to get on this. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, just not really to my type of palate, but the, it is really high quality, complex stuff. Okay, let's move on. This is the big boy. This is the top wine in their portfolio. Here we go. We have the Rojo Amarco. Cool packaging. I like it. This is their highest quality vermouth. It's supposed to be the most complex, too. Let's uh, give this a go, shall we? Have the same uh, browning kind of molasses type of color. Let's give this a smell. I'm excited. I see a lot of chocolate brownie type flavors. You definitely get the, the wormwood, the bitter type flavors, the botanicals. Toffee. A little bit minty, but the Mediterranean herbs stand out a little bit. Uh, also get just dried lemon to peel, not fresh lemon peel. The potpourri really comes out. More complex and thought-provoking than the Rojo Clasco. Let's give it a taste. Wow, this vermouth does have a lot of staying power. It does get a little bit botanical on the end, but what I'm actually really surprised with these vermouths, at 18% alcohol, it's not it's not burning my throat. I'm not going, Whoosh. I can't Whoosh. blow on a match and light it on fire. Actually, pretty darn decent. A lot of complexity here. Um, still a little, bit, a little bit kind of botanical for me, but for anybody that's looking to try something unique, this is really complex stuff. I have to say, I still am tasting it. It's quite long on the palate. It's really quite rich, layered, complex. I might like the Rojo Clasco, the basic, a little bit more. Let's give that a go again. I like the Rojo Clasico a little bit more. That's a little sweetness. It's not as complex as the Rojo Amarco, but you know what? Hey, that's just my palate. So this is where I need your help. You need to educate me on vermouth because I don't know very much about the higher quality vermouths. Whatever you know, drop it in the comments below. As for these type of vermouths, are they for me? Not really actually, you know, to my palate, so to speak. Maybe the Rojo Clasico, but I definitely see where there's a place for these type of wines. The residual sugar also adds to a little bit of smoothness, makes them, you know, a little bit more enjoyable. So do you like vermouth? Drop it in the comments below and I'll see you soon.